one. Good morning. This is Dr. John Bennett uh, broadcasting from Miami, Florida. Uh, we do not have any snow down here as opposed to our guest who is uh, snowed in up in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Dr. Uh, Rana. He's a world-renowned me medical educator for Parkinsonism. He's doing another in a series of uh, Parkinsonism related topics in the quest to become using education as as part of uh, treatment of a Parkinsonism patient. So Dr. Rana is going to talk about urological problems in Parkinsonism patient and welcome Dr. Rana, the stage is yours. Thank you Dr. Bennett, it's always nice to talk about Parkinson's disease. So today we'll uh, discuss uh, some of the problems related to urinary dysfunction which are seen in patients with Parkinson's disease. Uh, more than half of the patients complain of urinary problems at some stage in Parkinson's disease. Uh, urinary bladder normally um, stores the urine and when the bladder is full uh, when and the need arises, it empties the bladder. Uh, so in case of Parkinson's disease, this uh, function is disturbed. Uh, when there is very little urine, the bladder is oversensitive, it sends signals that it is full and then the need to urinate arises more frequently. Sometimes this can happen at night time and therefore patients have to make many more trips uh, to washroom. Uh, this, does, uh, this does disturb their sleep uh, and uh, as a result they have excessive daytime sleepiness and also when patients wake up at night time to go to washroom because they are slow uh, so there is a risk of uh, falls at, at that time. Also, some patients have a, um, have a problem with delaying the need to urinate. If they feel that they have to go to washroom to urinate, they have to do it very fast. So that causes urgency of urination. And they also have trouble emptying their bladder. Uh, they cannot empty the bladder fully and uh, they feel uh, that they have to go to uh, washroom again and again to urinate which causes a problem uh, uh, with multiple visits uh, to the washroom, especially at night time. So in the wall of the bladder, there is a muscle called retrusor muscle. Uh, so retrusor muscle uh, and the sphincter of bladder in normal healthy people, uh, they are very coordinated. Uh, so uh, when uh, the uh, when the bladder is full, the retrusor muscle shrinks and the sphincter opens. So as a result, a normal person can urinate. But in these patients, there is a problem with coordination of the retrusor muscle and the sphincter of bladder. So we call it uh, detrusor sphincter dyssynergia. So when this problem arises, then the detrusor muscle is uh, trying to act and contract uh, and the bladder is not opening uh, and therefore these patients may feel a need to uh, push hard or the urine is not uh, coming uh, as fluently as it should come uh, due to this problem with coordination. At other times the patients are slow so they have uh, trouble making it to the washroom. So what happens when they have need to go to washroom, they are feeling the urgency to urinate, uh, but they cannot uh, make it to the washroom because their speed is slow, reaction time is slow, so they may get overflow incontinence. The bladder is full and therefore uh, it overflows uh, and uh, they could get accidents. Okay, I guess you kind of already answered how does Parkinsonism relate to urinary dysfunction uh, what percentage of Parkinsonism patients approximately have uh, urinary problems? Uh, about, uh, right, about half of the patients uh, uh, with Parkinson's disease do have trouble with the urinary problems. Okay. okay Sometimes well, it may occur in the beginning of disease or uh, less uh, frequently although, but most of the time as the disease advances this becomes a problem. If these patients uh, have urinary problems in the beginning of the disease with the disease, with the disease onset, they get into trouble with their bladder, then uh, this does make us think that they may have other conditions such as multiple system, uh, multiple system atrophy. 
Okay, Doc, uh, we, we've already mentioned about uh, Parkinsonism being uh, a degeneration of the, uh, of the neuronal neurons. Uh, is, a, is the exact pathology of this particular symptom of Parkinsonism located centrally in the brain or distally in the peripheral nerves? Do you know about that? Right. This is due to autonomic dysfunction because the bladder supply is under the autonomic nervous system. Them. The sphincter of bladder has uh, uh, some uh, volunteer control as well, uh, such as in uh, the situations where we are, we are not ready to uh, we are not ready to go to washroom. Social situations we can hold on to it, but because this is a autonomic activity, so an autonomic dysfunction is very well known in Parkinson's disease. So these patients run into problem because of autonomic dysfunction. Okay, what are the symptoms of urinary dysfunction in a Parkinsonism patient? Uh, most patients uh, notice diverse symptoms. Some patients could notice uh, increased frequency of urination. Other patients uh, uh, note urgency of urination. They have to go very uh, fastly, very quickly. Uh, some patients may have dribbling of urination and other patients may have a feeling of incomplete voiding of their bladder. Even if they have urinated, they feel that they have not urinated. So as the disease progresses, this problem becomes worse and worse and in late stages of Parkinson's disease, these patients uh, have uh, trouble controlling their bladder. So as a result, they have to either wear pull-ups or, or they get accidents and this becomes a significant problem leading to their poor quality of life. Well, you know, Doc, so, so, uh, certainly all causes of urinary dysfunction are due to Parkinsonism and Parkinsonism patients. So what other causes of urinary dysfunction may be existing apart from the Parkinsonism that should be investigated? Right. Uh, urinary dysfunction could be due to many different causes. The common causes being uh, a UTI or in men uh, prostate problems. Uh, so what what happens? These symptoms are. Uh, uh, quite confusing with prostate problems in men. Uh, so when we see these patients, uh, they they should be seen by a urologist uh, to rule out if this is due to prostate problem or it is due to Parkinson's disease. In females, sometimes uh, other problems because of uh, uh, because of multiple pregnancies and deliveries. Uh, the females may have. Uh, uh, weakness of bladder or uh, they might uh, have stress incontinence. So these uh, symptoms could be quite confusing with uh, uh, those symptoms. Uh, so in uh, men, um, what, what, what happens, we, uh, we screen these patients very carefully if they had any prostate issues before. So when we refer them to a urologist, these patients may need uh, investigations uh, such as UA or urine culture and sensitivity as well as uh, they need urodynamic studies and sometimes what happens these patients if they already had a prostate uh, uh, surgery done uh, so and uh, they are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease later and uh, they develop urinary problems uh, so then it is uh, more uh, uh, kind of more indicative that this is due to Parkinson's disease indeed I had a patient uh, who who had prostate uh, surgery. Uh, he had a complete removal of prostate and uh, years later he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and then he developed these symptoms. Uh, so when he came to see me, so he asked me questions because his symptoms uh, uh, of urinary dysfunction were quite uh, similar to those which he had when he had prostate issues. So he asked me, Doc, uh, could prostate come back? <laughs> I, <laughs> I was quite, uh, um, uh, you know, I was quite amused <laughs> yeah. on his question. So I did explain to him that uh, you had prostate surgery already. Prostate really does not come back. Yeah, not come back. These symptoms are uh, likely due to Parkinson's disease. Well, you know, doctor, you, you, this, this issue you're talking about uh, is commonly occurs in medicine. It's called a diagnosis of exclusion. You exclude everything else first, and then and then you attribute it to Parkinsonism if you cannot find anything else. Right. So, so that's common in other areas of medicine. Um, how can you improve these symptoms, doctor? Uh, 
So when we see these patients, the first step is the screening. Uh, because you're seeing these Parkinson's patients at least two to three times a year in your clinic. Uh, especially as disease advances, they have to come more frequently. So the part of the follow-up screening should be urinary dysfunction. Every patient should be questioned about these symptoms because uh, the patients, uh, I mean, patients have not read the books. They are not sh sure if these symptoms are related to Parkinson's or they are related to some other issues. So they may not bring up uh, these symptoms uh, in attention of their treating physician. So when these patients come, it should be a, a part of a system inquiry of any physician who's treating Parkinson's patients. So when we find out uh, or when we have an idea that uh, these patients have urinary dysfunction, which could be related to Parkinson's disease, so we try to uh, do uh, simple things first, um, such as we try to uh, ask them to avoid any drinks which have diuretic effects, such as caffeine or alcohol intake, uh, and keeping a track of uh, their fluids, what they drink, especially at night time. And also before going to bed, about a couple of hours before, they should uh, avoid drinking any fluids because this would limit their need to go to washroom and they would not have nocturia at night time, uh, which is quite bothersome. And indeed, nocturia at night time can also lead to anxiety because patients, uh, they just feel the need to go and then they go to washroom, they come back, they can't sleep, it makes them anxious and anxiety uh, makes them to go to washroom again. So this is a vicious uh, cycle. To avoid this, uh, we try uh, these things. But at the same time, you have to tell them to drink enough fluids because in summer or hot weather, they could get dehydrated if they don't drink fluids. And also, uh, not drinking enough fluids could lead to constipation in some patients. So if these uh, strategies uh, don't work, uh, then uh, we tell them uh, that they might need medications. Uh, the patients uh, should uh, wear clothing which can easily come off. Uh, at night time, those patients uh, uh, who have trouble with mobility, they could keep a bedpan or a urinal uh, on the side. Uh, for the men, a condom catheter could be useful in some cases. Uh, and uh, uh, also, uh, the patients are quite sensitive about the urine uh, and uh, the odor of the urine. Uh, so if they drink cranberry juice, uh, so that does uh, decrease the smell of urine in these patients. In the daytime, uh, if they are going out, so they should urinate uh, before leaving home. Uh, and uh, also uh, during the day, if uh, they could be reminded uh, to urinate uh, at a scheduled time, so that does uh, uh, help to prevent uh, these problems. There are some exercises which uh, can help the strengthening of bladder, uh, especially in females uh, who may have weakness of bladder, as I mentioned before, due to multiple plop, uh, due to multiple pregnancies. So these exercises may be quite helpful. Sometimes, um, on volunteer basis, if patients try to control their urine and then let it go. If they have time to these uh, do these exercises or delaying uh, and initiating urination, uh, so that it could retrain their bladder. Very good, doctor. And you brought up a good point, which applies to other parts of medicine, is that the do it's up to the doctor to be the pointed, uh, appointed historian and ask questions about the various systems, uh, right. because you can't expect patients to volunteer this information because they don't know that urinary uh, symptoms are important. So at any rate, we thank you, doctor, for this excellent presentation and another uh, series of presentations for Parkinsonism. And we'll see you on the next one. Sure. Thank you very much, Dr. Bennett. See you next time. Thank you.